Hello everyone, this is Christy and in today's episode of this Zara Designer Pro tutorial we will look at the shade tool or shadow tool. This tool can be used to create shadows in three different ways and I'm going to show you examples of each one of them. So the shade tool allows you to create a shadow to an object. So if I select an object, just a simple simple object, let's make it purple. You can have three types of shadow applied to this object and the shadow tool is on the left here it's uh, activated by Control f2 and you can notice across the top you have three types of shadow you have the wall shadow which is sort of parallel to the object you have the floor shadow and the glow which is still a shadow but you can change also its color so let's apply the first one a wall shadow you notice that my object now has a shadow behind it, sort of to the right and below a bit. And this is when you select your object and then you can move this shadow around. If you drag on the object or next to the object, you can drag and move this shadow. And other controls are at the top here, you can change the blur. So notice I can pull this up and my shadow becomes more blurry. And the second control is the transparency. How hard do I want my shadow to be? If I put it down, it makes the shadow stronger, more black. And if I turn it up, it of course makes it less obvious. Another thing you can do is apply a color to the shadow. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can try that. Just drag a color from your color bar onto the shadow, not onto the object onto the shadow and then your shadow becomes that color. So if you wanted to create an effect where some sort of an object casts color onto an object or wall or something around it, you could create this with the color of that and you can make it maybe darker and there you go. It's like your object creates a bit of an ambient occlusion in there. The second type of shadow, let's make this black again. The second type of shadow is a floor shadow. This one originates at the base of the object and stretches backwards. And you can control the blur at the end of the object. So the shadow will have the same shape as your object, but it will look like it's been uh, cast on the floor. So of course, if you drag this, you can move it up and down, left and right, you can change the direction and also you can control the blur again. So you can make it sharper or blurrier. And of course the transparency controls the same like the other one. And finally, I want to show you the glow, which is going to be sort of a shadow around your object. This cannot be moved. It can only be made larger or smaller. And of course you can control that with the blur control here and the strength with the transparency control. One thing I didn't know, show you, one control is this one here, the profile. You may have seen on the other videos I did about the fill tool and the gradient tool and the transparency tool, this profile does the same thing there. So if you make this blur larger, just so we make it obvious, and if we click on this profile, this profile changes the curve of how dark and how light the shadow is and where does the darkness and lightness start. So it has two slides. If I pull the first one up, it makes the shadow darker at the start and then fall off suddenly at the end or the other way around. You can make it very, very large and just a little bit of light at the end. And if you change the bottom one, this controls the distance between the starting and the ending of the shadow. So the black here, there is a little bit of black and then it goes most of the distance being sort of a mid-tone gray and then back to white, completely to white at the end there. Or I can make the transition smoother by pushing in the other direction. And then here, I don't actually see the transition because the contrast is so strong. So this helps you to give a little bit of personality to your shadow. 
So if you want to make a very nice floor shadow, you could play with the profile to kind of make it blurry at the end and then maybe start earlier. So to almost show like you have two light sources. So let me give you an example of some real photos that I have found on Unsplash and I'm, I've isolated the object from these photos and I'm trying to recreate the shadow on the object like in the photo. So we have this photo of a book lying on the on this surface here. So you notice the book has a very strong shadow on the bottom and the left. So the light comes in from the left, top, top right actually. So let's see if I can recreate the shadow with a version of this book isolated from its background. So you see I have a transparent photo here. If you want to find out how I actually obtained this photo, I didn't actually cut it myself. I used a tool called remove.bg. If you look on my channel, I have a video presenting that tool. It's really nice. And it helps you isolate an object from its background and it does a very good job. So let's see if I can actually recreate the shadow of this object as it is here in this photo. So if I want to, of course, this is going to be a wall shadow because it's going to be flat behind the object. So let's go to the shadow tool, apply a wall shadow. And by default, the shadow is on the bottom right. But in this case, it's on the bottom left. So I'm going to drag and move it. And then, of course, it's much darker here. So I'm going to make this all the way black almost. And of course, reduce the blurriness a bit because if we look in the in the photo here, if I zoom in, you see the shadow is really, really strong. No, not not much fading except maybe in the bottom here. So I'm going to zoom out and on this object, I'm going to make the shadow quite sharp and possibly even darker. So there you go. Almost like that. So of course you are limited to the outline of your object on this, right? So your shadow will not be perfectly like a photo. Here apparently there's the light is uh, sort of close to the surface and then it casts a much longer shadow down here. So I could possibly do this, but I can't actually make a shadow with two different types of fade in Zara. I would probably have to create a duplicate of this object and apply a different shadow to it. So what I could do is I could duplicate this and apply the same shadow to it, but this time pull it in and down and add more blurriness to the bottom part and then put this behind the other one and then make them all sit sort of in the same place. That actually creates similar to this, but it's not so perfect like a real like a real photo here. So um, so this is one type of shadow. So let's let me try and see if I can reproduce another photo that I have. So this time I have this photo here of a stack of books on a table. So again, I isolated these objects here. And I want to create the same shadow here. So let's see how close I can get to it. Of course, I think here there are two light sources because you notice here there's a lighter shadow and a darker one. But let's let's do our best with what we can. So we have the shadow tool again. My object is selected and I'm going to use a floor shadow this time. You notice it's gone way down here, so I have to move it like that. So my problem is, is going to be that my object has been is a bitmap and I have the outline here. So what I need to do for this is to first crop my object using the crop tool. And I'm going to crop it just about inside of the. So note, uh, men, remember what I said that the shadow applies, the, the floor shadow applies to the baseline of the object. So you need to make sure that even if your object is transparent, Zara is not going to detect that actually you don't have any image data outside of your object into the frame. So that's why you need to make sure that your object is perfectly cropped so that the shadow can start at the baseline. So once I've done that, I can now go back to the shadow, apply the, the, the floor shadow here. So you notice now that my shadow starts at the baseline of the object. And of course, 
this is kind of long so i should probably push it way out and do a very strong blur and less transparency so i'm almost there i mean the shadow on this object in the real photo the shadow of these leaves doesn't actually show here because probably the light is farther away so you know but you can move it left and right you can move it up or down so that's it so there you go i hope this was useful the shadow tool is quite nice you can sort of imitate some shadows um, and create some fake shadows if you're creating graphics for like banners and graphics for uh, flyers and things like that the shadows help add a little bit of 3d dimension to your objects or to your publication whatever you're doing to make the items more interesting more real um, but don't overdo it you know because nowadays in photoshop everybody just puts a shadow on top of everything or behind everything rather so um, thanks for watching this tutorial feel free to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more zara designer pro tutorials coming up i'm doing all the tools on my channel check out the playlist in the description where you can find all of the other tutorials thanks for watching thanks for your time see you next time